we are seeing a global disconnect between too little economic risk-taking of the sort that we want to be associated with investment in, in real capital, with job creation on the part of firms, which is necessary to economic growth. So too little economic risk-taking, but too much financial risk-taking. And we are seeing that uh, in terms of excesses in a number of financial markets. The second key message has to do with banks, which are an integral part of the global financial system, which are particularly important in some parts of the world, like in Europe, where most of the financing provided to the economy is through banks. And what we find is that the good news is that banks now are safe. They are certainly much safer than they were a few years back. Banks have raised capital, they're now more liquid, and therefore this is great news that banks now are very safe. But the challenge is that not all banks are strong enough in terms of in terms of their capacity to earn money over time as to provide sustained lending to accompany the economic recovery. So this is like if you go to the doctor and you get a clean bill of health after a medical checkup and the doctor tells you, okay, now you are free to lead a normal life. And you say, but wait a minute, I do not lead a normal life. I'm an athlete, so I need to compete, so I need more. So we have banks now which are getting clean bills of health, but they need to do more. And the third message is on non-banks, what is sometimes called the shadow banks. And non-banks, uh, there we have good news and not so good news. The good news is that uh, market-based finance is becoming more important in helping the recovery. This is the case in the United States, which is an economy where markets are very important. And in Europe, there is also an attempt to improve market-based financing and a number of companies and, and banks also are raising uh, money from the markets, and I think that's, that's quite important. But it also comes with a side effect, which is that risks are shifting into non-banks. Some of them are shifting into the less regulated, more prone to accumulate systemic risks, which is a shadow bank, and the question is what to do about those, and that need appropriate oversight and regulation by extending the regulatory perimeter. And there is one type of risk which is very important, which is the risk that markets may become illiquid at times of stress. And that is something which is uh, crucial because now that we have done everything possible to avoid bank runs uh, in the future, we should also do our best to avoid uh, market runs in the future, which could compromise financial stability. I think the euro area is one case where there is less financial risk taking, but where there is very, very little economic risk taking. We know the euro area is going through a very low inflation, very low growth uh, episode, and the key thing is to avoid that it gets trapped into a low inflation, as we call it, or low inflation and low growth equilibrium. That would be a bad equilibrium for the euro area and for its citizens. And that means that policymakers need to get their act together. There has been tremendous progress over the past few years in terms of the things that have happened in the euro area. Now there is a banking union which is about to start in a few weeks. Uh, now there are financial backstops like the European Stability Mechanism. You know, there are many things that have been put in place to make the euro area a more solid from the viewpoint of the economic and financial architecture. And national policies have become better in many places, fiscal consolidation and in some cases structural reforms. But that's the missing thing, structural reforms in most euro area countries, and that's badly needed. And in addition, there is also a need to make banks, to help banks adjust their business models so that they can cope with the new post-crisis um, uh, business realities and the new regulatory realities and have enough muscle to lend in support of the recovery.